The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar, Let's Learn Features. So uh, this program is brought to you by LifeCham and sponsored by Bursa Malaysia. Uh, and our topic today is Case Study and Market Analysis of FKLI. So now, um, before we begin, if you can hear me and uh, if you can see the screen, can you please click uh, raise the hand button? Okay, if you can hear me clearly and if you can see the screen, uh, can you please click the raise the hand button? Okay, I'm seeing, yep, I've seen quite a lot of hands now. Okay, you can put your hands down. Okay, so my name is Smita, and I'll be your moderator for this evening. So before we start, we'll just go to the disclaimer first. Uh, whatever that is shared during this webinar is purely educational. Uh, we will not be responsible for any decision that you make to buy or sell, as this webinar is purely educational to teach you on uh, investment. So for the whole year, we have planned a derivatives webinar. And our next webinar will be on the 4th of July. So it's the webinar will be in Mandarin. And as you can see, we have a whole list of the webinars planned until end of the year. So, okay, so our speaker today will be Miss uh, Pauline Yong, who is the Managing Director of Sigma Wealth, Sindian Berhad. She is a certified financial planner and a licensed financial planner with, with Security Commission license and Bank Negara licensed financial advisor representative. So she has been in the, in the training industry for more than 20 years. She was an economics lecturer for 16 years and now she is the course facilitator for the Financial Planning Association Malaysia, CPE courses. She has published five investment and financial planning books and currently a regular writer for various magazines and newspapers. Regularly, she co she's a commentator for City Plus FM radio station every Wednesday morning for Stock Market Outlook. She received her MBA in Finance from University of Leicester, UK, and her BBA on Honours in Finance from York University, Canada. In addition, she also is a certified chartist in Malaysia and a member of the Society of Technology Analysis in UK. So, Pauline, I will just hand over the presentation to you right now. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Is it showing my screen now? Yes, it's showing your screen. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Pauline Young, and um, I'm glad to be back again. So tonight, I'm going to share with you uh, my personal experience about this um, futures trading. And um, actually, for I've been invest, I've been an equity investor for many, many years, more than 20 years. However, as a futures trading, right, I just started in uh, six years ago, 2001, end of 2012. In fact, it was uh, uh, end of 2012, so I think about six, seven years. So um, because for me, my personality uh, to be in this um, investing industry is that I can consider myself a very conserv conservative investor. So I always think that trading is uh, something that is not my risk appetite. So it's, uh, you know, like uh, it's risky, it's dangerous, and then you will lose money and things like that. So then, but I wanted to um, try on trading because um, since I have already um, in this industry for so many years, and then I've been studying um, our Kiasia index for, for, for more than 20 years. So I was thinking perhaps uh, as a start, as a futures trader, as a start, um, I should trade the FKLI, which is our Kelsia index. So that was my first um, uh, trade on the FKLI. And then I have been trading FKLI since uh, since then. So um, in our Busa derivative market, we have uh, a few financial products, but the 
the most popular ones are FKLI and the FCPO. So I would suggest that for a, a starter, you may start with a FKLI, which is our KLCI index. And then um, if you gain more experience, then you go to the FCPO. Okay. The reason why um, FKLI, I would think that is because um, uh, FKLI is more like a, at a slower pace than the FCPO. So that if, if you have made any mistake, right, um, this market is still forgiving. So you still can, you are able to recover. You, you are not like CPO. Sometimes you will see that the market move, move up and down too fast. Okay, so later I will share with you uh, uh, some of my experience. So today's content, um, I will start with fundamental analysis because when we talk about uh, FKLI, it's about um, top 30 component stocks. So, so those are the companies inside this, uh, the, the company, the index that will move the index. So I'll talk about fundamental analysis, uh, the technical analysis, the chart pattern, Okay, what are the bullish and bearish chart patterns, the indicators, and then the support and resistance, and then the case followed by the case studies. So in this webinar, um, because if you want me to talk into like very detailed, um, it is impossible. So I will take up the cream of the essence of, of, uh, of this fundamental and also the technical analysis. I will take all the essence and then I will explain um, in the most, um, hopefully in the most simple way so that it's easier for everyone to understand, okay? So first, when we talk about the futures contract, we are looking at, sorry, we are looking at um, the FKLI and uh, one contract will cost you 4,000 ringgit per contract, okay? And then our underlying instrument is our Pusa Malaysia KLCI index. So I'll talk more about this later. Then the contract size uh, is a FKLI times 50 ringgit. So 50 ringgit is one point. Okay, one index point is 50 ringgit. So if it moved by 0 0.5 index point, and that's 25 ringgit. And this 0 0.5 is the minimum uh, price take. Okay, so every movement, the minimum is 0 0.5 index or 0 0.5 point, which is uh, 25 ringgit. And the trading hour, the trading hour, you know, our normal um, equity market is nine to five, right? But for our KLCI, uh, FKLI, the futures market, um, they start 15 minutes earlier and 15 minutes later. So we will start at 8.45 and then closing at 5.15, okay? And the lunch time, the lunch break will be until 12.45. So these are the trading hours that um, you need to take note because um, usually uh, for uh, uh, the 8.45 to 9 a.m., this 15 minutes uh, time frame, usually the investors are uh, very emotional. So if you are good in psychology, okay, you can, you can um, tell the, understand the psychology of this trading usually for those people who are good in psychology, they can make the money from this first 15 minutes. Okay, but th those have to be um, very experienced trader, then they can make that 15 minutes, they can make the money. Okay, so, um, all right. Who are the participants? The hedgers and the speculators, mostly will be the speculators. And the speculators will be me and you and then all the market participants. Majority, we are the speculators because we only uh, speculate for profit. So that means what that means, uh, we do not uh, hold any underlying position and then we just buy into the futures market. Okay. Uh, so that means either you can long or you can short. Long means that you, you buy now and then you sell higher later. Short means that you sell now at a higher price and then hope, hopefully that it will go down and so that you can pick it up at a lower price so that you can make the profit margin. So speculators, are we with risk? Yes, we are with risk, okay? Okay, so for this KLCI component stocks, um, we need to look at the top 30 component stocks because the movement of these top 30 component stocks will influence the FKLI, okay? So usually for what I would do, I will look at the uh, big cap stocks. 
So the big cap stocks will be like IHH, Hong Leong, um, the Petronas, and then, okay, go back, CIMB, um, Hong Leong Bank again, and then we have uh, Public Bank. Just now, do we see Maybank? Uh, Maybank. Okay, Maybank is the largest component, 100 billion. 100 billion of market cap. And then um, public bank also quite big. Tanaga also 70 billion. So Sam Dabi also about 30 billion. So these are the, the uh, top um, market cap company. So they are waiting. Okay, so this, because um, when we are talking about these top 30 component stocks, right? Each of them, they have their own market. Uh, cap market capitalization meaning is their current price current market price uh, times the number of shares okay so uh, for example maybank the market cap is 100 billion so 100 billion meaning what that means um, it could be their um, the the price which is eight uh, eight or nine ringgit then times the uh, number of shares become 100 billion ringgit okay so okay now um be okay before i move on uh, besides you know about these um top 30 component stocks uh, and then you also need to look at their technical chart individually so that you want to know that whether any of these top weightage uh stocks have any technical uh, weakness or any potential technical um breakout Okay, because um, when you are trading the FKLI, which is the derivative in the derivative market, when you're trading this FKLI, the performance of this FKLI is directly linked to this underlying component stocks. So if those top 30, like a Maybank, Public Bank, and all these large cap stocks, they are experiencing some technical weakness, so either they have broke major chart pattern, the neckline, or uh, breakout, whatever, then it will immediately reflect on the FKLI performance. Then you will know that if they have broke down, that means the FKLI will also broke down. Okay, or if there's a potential coming to break down, then you will see that there's a potential for a short opportunity in the FKLI. So, so this, this part, I hope you understand. That means for this individual, you also need to look at their uh, chart pattern as well. Okay, then we come to the fundamental. So usually for um, trading, right? Trading, um, we will focus more on the um, technical analysis because um, the difference between investing and trading is that Investing, we will look at the fundamental. We will say that uh, about 80% is about fundamental and then 20% is about technical. That's for investing into the stocks, individual stocks. But however, if you are looking at this trading, I would say that about 80, 90% you are looking at the charts, the, the technical uh, analysis of the, the, the chart patterns rather than the fundamental. The fundamental is just giving you an overall picture, a big idea or macro view about what is happening, okay? So um, I will go through briefly the fundamental. I will not spend too much time on this fundamental. So there's uh, macro, the macro um, factors. So the macro factors, the first important one is the GDP growth. So this is uh, directly linked to the stock market. You have good GDP growth, you have good stock market, you have poor GDP growth, the stock market will be reflected because this is the, the like a measurement of the health of the economy. Then you have the interest rates, okay? Interest rate. So now we are um, we have recently reduced our interest rate to um, by twenty five basis point, and um, potentially maybe there could be another round of uh, lowering. So we we are we are looking at it. So usually when you are looking at the interest rate lowering, right? Because the relationship between low interest rate and the uh, uh, the interest rate and the stock market is inverse relationship. So when interest rate low, then hopefully that will boost up the stock market because people do not want to put their money into the um, interest rate because a low interest rate kind of uh, FD because it's too low. Then they will put their money into the stock market. 
Okay, so that's inverse relationship. If interest rate is high, people all people put their money into the uh, FD. Okay, then um, you look at the crude oil prices and things like that. For Malaysia, it, this one is particular important for us because we are more like a commodity country. We have a uh, FCPO, we have crude oil, so rubber and all these commodities. So um, this will affect our um, general economy. Then of course the property prices, inflation rate strengthen, strength of the ringgit and fiscal policies. Then the in terms of micro, micro we look at the industry, industry or the competitors, the market share, consumer behavior, taste and preference, uh, government intervention, industry regulation. Okay, so all this. So um, perhaps if you were to talk about this, maybe you were um, looking back at the top 30 stocks and then individually, any of this will influence um, the, for example, Tanaga. Instead, the, the industrial regulation will influence uh, the um, Tanaga or the telecom industry. The industrial regulation will, or the government intervention will have a great effect on the telco industry. So all this will be affecting. All right, then of course, um, this is part of the fundamental analysis, which is SWOT analysis. So I briefly just talk about what is SWOT. So SWOT um, stand for strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats, okay? So strength and opportunities, these are the plus points. So you, in, when you're analyzing a company, when you're analyzing a company, you look at the strength and the opportunity, the, the positive side about this company, this, this, this company has any internal strength, it's their staff, uh, do they have a good management? Is the product selling well? Do they have, uh, you know, um, the, the management itself is uh, very um, open, transparent, and uh, whatever. So these are the strengths within the company. Whereas opportunities is the external factors that is influencing the, the company. So it could be um, due to exports. There's more export opportunities because of the trade war or something. So th these are opportunities. Then the right-hand side weakness and threats, these are the negative points. So the weakness re refer to the internal negative points about the company. Maybe the, the staff turnover rate is high, the management is poor, things like that. And then the threats refer to the external threat that is influencing the company. Okay, so, so this is the SWOT analysis. So that's all for the fundamental. Now we focus on the technical because um, I believe um, I, I have a lot to say on the technical analysis. Um, when I started to learn like um, about this technical analysis, uh, because I was a finance um, graduate, so uh, all the time I always think that fundamental analysis is more superior, and um, it is the way for you know for the to if you want to be a long term investor or I mean if you want to be a long term winner in this um, finance industry. Um, Fundamental in analysis is good enough. However, um, I later I when I get to know about technical analysis, I realize that perhaps these two can work together, and then you can um, improve your knowledge, and then you can um, become even more successful in terms of uh, so, um, stock selection and also your investment. So then um, I started this um, technical analysis. I think about uh, about ten maybe eight years ago. And of course, um, after I've learned about technical analysis, my perspective changed a lot about the investment industry. Because um, I can see that for this technical analysis, um, it is usually uh, more towards, um, mostly towards trading. But at the same time, um, you can also use technical analysis to look at macro view about a certain industry. So, Technical analysis itself um, comprised of many, many things. So um, the study of um, technical analysis is a whole big whole um, uh, a subject that we, we, there's no ending to it. We have to keep uh, ourselves um, upgrade to it. Okay. So basically there are two assumptions. The first assumption is that um, history repeats itself and then uh, past trends predict future ones. So this is the first assumption of the technical analysis. So you, by studying the historical um, pattern, you can predict to the futures. So for example, head and shoulder, whenever you see the head and shoulder, it broke and then this thing happened, price drop. And then whenever you see a W sign, W chart pattern, and then you cut 
uh, break through the, the trend line and then the stock move up higher. So, so this thing keep repeating itself, okay? And then number two assumption is that the price pattern is the sum of all the behaviors of the market crowd. Therefore, technical analysis tracks the psychology of the market. So it is a psychology game in the end, okay? The whole market or the whole um, trading environment is about psychology, whether you are able to um, keep yourself um, in a, like a emotion stable or not because sometimes when it comes to the time you're supposed to cut loss and then you've got emotional and then you feel like you don't want to cut loss and then the the, the loss keep going okay so these are your psychology and then the psychology that okay if everybody think the same like this and shall i do shall i have a different different um, thought so that's also another psychology so in the end you have to think that this thing the whole thing is about mind game m-i-n-d the mind game so you are playing thinking about what others think and then what you should react okay so you are about thinking about um, how to fight with them according to the psychology okay so um, so this is technical analysis based on these two assumptions. Okay, the basics of technical analysis. So, so this is a basic. That means uh, you, at least you must know the time frame. The the understanding of the time frame is important because when you want to do a setup on your trades, you must have uh, this time frame in mind. So whether you want to go for a short term kind of trading style or you want to go for a longer term kind of trading style, so this time frame you must have it in place before you go into trading. Okay, so short term is between two to um, six weeks. Of course, you have a very short term, like within hours or within um, minutes or within a day, uh, you call it the day trade. Okay, so that's um, how short the time frame is. Intermediate term refers to a period that lasts from weeks to months, about three weeks to three months. Then the long term trend refers to a period that more than nine months to two years. Okay, so when you're talking about trading, I would think that you are looking at this two to less than six weeks time. Okay, for for usually some people they like to be a day trader. So every day is a fresh day. So that means um they they will close the position um at the end of the day. They will not carry the trade overnight to the next day, because every day they start from a fresh day. And another kind of trader, uh, like me, I prefer weekly trading so every week is a new day for me that means every week i start from a fresh new uh day or calculation because um my p l calculator is week by week so um you you will have to trade on a weekly basis because a lot of the time i notice um when it comes to the weekend saturday sunday um although friday it may look like that over the weekend, things happen in the world because of Donald Trump or because of uh, North Korea, China, things happen. Then on Monday, uh, everything will be reversed. So that's why I would prefer to finish the trade within that week so that I will not carry on to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then when it comes to Monday, it will be another situation, okay? The charting basic, okay, now as a, to learn about technical analysis, the very first thing you need to learn is the trend. Okay, remember there's this saying say that um, trend is your friend. Okay, you have to follow the trend. So later I have a strategy to share with you. It's about trend. Okay, you just follow the trend and then you will trade on the trade out, uh, breakout. So um, how to measure the trend? So in order to learn about that trend trading strategy, you must learn how to uh, draw lines, okay, draw the trend lines. So it's very simple. You draw the trend line when you see the peak, the peak and the peak, right? You just draw a straight line um, connecting all the peaks and then that that's the trend line, the upper trend line, all right? And then the lower trend line, you'll see the bottom, the bottom, and then here, there are three bottoms here. So you connect all these three bottom and then you draw another trend line. Trend line has to be parallel to each other. Okay, parallel to each other, so that you can see that it's a very clear trend line that telling you that when it hits there, then it come down to here, and then when it hits here, then it come down and then hit again, and then it go up. 
Okay, so um, the, the prices seems to move very nicely within this channel. This is called a down channel. It moves nicely within the down channel. Then this is a horizontal trend, the same thing. You connect the bottom and then you connect the top and then you can see that it is moving in a horizontal manner. Hit the, the resistance, this is the resistance part. And then the bottom is the support. And then when you go up again, resistance and then support. And then the uptrend. The uptrend, same thing. You connect this line and then this line and then that's the uptrend. It's very simple, okay? so. You need to practice on your um, screen by drawing the lines. Okay, for a start, you keep drawing this line. You can spend like uh, a few hours just to draw the practice on this trend line. Okay, after you are familiar with this trend line, and then try to also draw smaller trend line also because this is like a kind of like a medium term kind of trend line because it's uh, from one month to another month. So try to draw also within weeks also. Okay, small trend line small trend line. Within this channel, you also have this down channel, up channel, down channel, oops, <laughs> and then up channel, down channel. Okay, so you still have this zigzag pattern within this downtrend. Okay, so, so the trend line, you can draw a major trend line, then followed by a smaller trend line so that you can see the, the actual movement. Okay, so a downtrend is formed by joining the successive peaks and then uh, maybe horizontal if the stock price is trading sideways. All right. Trend lines can be used as support or resistance. Okay. So the steeper the trend line, the less significant it is. The longer the trend line, the more significant it is. So what it means is that when you go back here, okay. Now, when you look at this um, trend line, the longer the trend line, it means that it is uh, carried like a few months already. A trend, a longer trend line compared to a shorter trend line, which one is more significant? The longer trend line is more significant because um, the time that it has carried um, carry, uh, for a long time, it has traveled for such a long time. So most likely that this, uh, uh, the longer the, the time that it has traveled, so it is uh, more important. It is significance means importance. It will give you a more important message to you. Okay, when you want to make decision. And then the steeper the trend line, it means that the price is moving at a very fast manner. That means a lot of people are selling. Or it, either it go down here or it go up here. Okay, it go up very steep trend line and then it go down very steep trend line. So it means what? It means that people are participating around here and around here. Uh, a lot of people are participating that push the price in a short period of time in a very steep manner. And then this one here, it, the downtrend is very steep. So that means in a short period of time, people sell down, the volume spike up, okay? So it's very significant. It is, you know, it, it is uh, important in terms of uh, analyzing the, the stock market, okay? Then um, this one is another practice. You see this long trend line and then you draw a long trend line. So, um, another thing about this trend line is that because just now I said the longer the trend line, the more significant it is. So if let's say this trend line is a 10 year trend line, let's say 10 year trend line, and then the price broke below the 10 year trend line, what do you think about the impact on the stock market? Will it be huge impact? Yes. So if your trend line is 10 year kind of trend line and then you broke below this kind of uh, ultra long trend line, the impact on the stock market is huge. It's going to be huge. However, if you are looking at small trend line, a uh, small one just within uh, weeks and then it broke below that small trend line, will it be uh, a big fall? Well, it is only during that time, it will fall for a short period of time and then it will rebound again. Compared to this longer trend line, the fall will be longer. It could be two years of downtrend because you are looking at 10 years of uh, uptrend and then followed by two years of downtrend. But if you are looking at a small uptrend here, then maybe the downtrend is about, if it's uh, about six weeks of uptrend, maybe the downtrend is only about two weeks. Then it go up again. 
Okay, so you understand this concept about trend line. So the, the trend line is important because it will give you an, an idea that what happened when the price violates this trend line, the impact, how long is this impact? Okay, and the, the length of this impact is in proportion to this timeline here. Okay, so, so that's the important lesson or important essence about trend line. Okay, the length of the trend line will determine the effect if there is, should there be any violation, will determine the, the impact of this effect. Okay. All right, support and resistance is also very important. As a trader, this support and resistance is always at the back of my head. Whenever I'm in this, uh, in the trade, or even if I'm not in the trade, but this, at least I know that this KLCI index, what's the support and what's the resistance level. And this support and resistance will guide you in your trading. Because no matter what strategy that you'll be using, either a trend line breakout strategy or a uh, a uh, gap up strategy or uh, indicator kind of strategy, this support and resistance is always have to be at the back of your head and then to give you a guideline where is the overall picture, where is the final support, where is the final resistance. Okay, and, and before you go into the trade, remember, ask yourself, where is the support and where is the resistance before you enter. So support is a level that buyers are willing to support that, uh, that stop the de decline. So when the price go down and then um, it stop there and then it go up, you turn. Okay, so this one is a support. Then the resistance is a, uh, when you go up and then it turn down. So that's your resistance because it is uh, difficult to break, break through. And then usually I would make it a round number, even though sometimes it's not a round number, I just make it a round number, like example, one, six, four, seven. It's not a round number, I just say, okay, one, six, five, zero, easy. Okay, so that, um, because when we look at technical analysis, it doesn't have to be exact, exact figure, one, six, four, seven. No, you don't have to be exact figure. You make it a, like a round number because a round number is also a psychology number. Five ring it. 10 ringgit psychology number, okay? Then the resistance. Okay, so this is the resistance. I've said already. Then, um, okay, once a support zone has been violated, it becomes a resistance zone. Conversely, once the resistance zone is violated, it becomes a support zone. So this one is an example. So initially you look at this price chart here. Um, the price has been wanting to break this resistance. Uh, this one is the top of it. So it has been wanting to break this resistance and then it didn't success, not successful, and then it come down. Okay. And then it tried to break again and then it come down. And then finally the third time successful. And then when it broke up and then all the way and then down again. And you see this down, this resistance, the top the peak here becomes the support level of this time frame. Okay, so it means what? That means the resist this same line, right? This same line can be a resistance and it can be a support of the uh, stocks, particular stock or index. Okay, so when you uh, happen to break the resistance successfully, then you are able to go up. And then, however, if you break down again, so then you are you are trying to to break this resistance and then finally you go up again, okay? Then in the end, you will try to stay above this uh, support level. Okay, once the resistance is broken up, it becomes your support, okay? As the time goes on the, from left to right, that means from, from uh, as the time goes by, okay? Now the next part about volume analysis is that um, the word heavy volume is important, okay? So heavy volume with falling price, heavy volume with rising price. So whenever you see heavy volume, that means there's a huge volume for that particular uh, stock followed by a rising price. So it is bullish. If you see a heavy vo volume followed by a falling price, it is very bearish, okay? So this volume 
will confirm the price action okay the volume will confirm the price action so huge volume if there's a rising price it confirmed this rising price if it's a under situation of a falling price that means this huge volume confirmed this falling price that means it's bearish okay otherwise when you have a light volume it is like uh, not so significant that means the market is like not really pay attention to it and then uh, the price rise or price fall is just a, a normal uh, market uh, normal behavior it's not so significant okay significant ones are the high volume ones okay so this is a uh, illustration so when your volume this is your volume bar so when your volume is rising 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 then your price is rising okay so this is bullish momentum however your volume up to a point your price still rising okay your price still rising but your volume has falling is falling okay it's it's falling so what does that mean it means that as your price continue to increase but your volume is reducing does this confirm this price increase no this price increase is not a good confirmation when your price rise and then followed by the volume rise does this confirm your price rise yes that means you it confirms that this price is uh, bullish and then its uh, momentum is is uh, strong but for this one as you see the volume is falling that means this rising price right is not with the momentum the the sub it, it doesn't get the support from the volume so therefore is this sustainable the rising price is this sustainable when the volume is falling no it's not sustainable so very soon you will see the price start to drop okay so these are um if you're looking for psychology right this actually these are psychology okay all these are psychology then um you have this um uh your volumes rising and then you are in the falling market okay the price is falling so as the price keep dropping and dropping and dropping and the volume is rising and then keep rising that means more people are selling okay so under this situation does this price fall is is this price fall uh trend is this trend confirmed by the volume yes that means this rising volume is confirming this downtrend okay and however if this price continue to fall and fall and fall but the volume is reducing okay so that means this price fall is it confirmed by the volume it's not confirmed so that means will this fall continue to fall further very soon it will reverse because your volume is not supporting this price fall. because people are thinking that the price is already too low not i'm not willing to sell anymore so i would rather not to participate in the market and nobody participate and then after a while digested then the price will start to recover okay so usually when you look into the chart right you look for this either you look for a a, a peak a spike in the volume bar or you look for a ultra low volume bar okay so there's two extreme huh? either you look for a very high volume bar or a very low volume bar because these things are the point of uh, turning, point of turning, okay? So any trend, if you see this extreme volume bar, it could be the trend is reversing, okay? So this is also uh, another um, trick about this trading. Okay, the chart pattern. I hope I'm explaining in a very simple manner. If you have questions, maybe you can write down later, you can ask me. Then um, this chart pattern, chart pattern, it is important. Some people, their strategies is to use the chart pattern as their, one of their strategies. So when it comes to trading, right, um, we always have must have uh, a few strategies in hand. Just like when you are going for a, a war or something, you must have a few weapons in your in your hand so that if this didn't work out you come up with another weapon if this didn't work out you come up with another weapon so these strategies are with you okay you must have it so one of the strategies here is this um, chart pattern 
Okay, so that means you look for the opportunity to trade looking by looking at the chart pattern alone. And this chart pattern, does it come uh, easily? It depends on your time frame. If whether you're looking at a five minute chart or a, a one day chart. Okay, so this chart pattern will, uh, whenever you see this chart pattern, this thing will happen. Okay, for example, this is a, a typical double top pattern. Double top pattern, it means that you have a twin peaks, okay, like a mountain, two mountains. And then you draw a neckline. Between the mountain, you see there's a bottom here, right? Okay, you look at this as the bottom and then you draw a horizontal neckline, okay? Then um, this is your neckline, the chart pattern neckline. And this neckline is very, very important because you are looking for the opportunity for short, okay, for a short trade. That means you are looking for the opportunity to sell short. So when you see this thing happen, right, and then the price is very, very close to this neckline, and then you know that this opportunity has come. So you just wait there patiently for a breakdown, okay? It's like you are going for fishing. You have to wait for this trade to come alive so in order to come alive you have to wait until this line cross below the neckline if it didn't cross below the deadline you start to to sell uh, there's a risk involved it has to be below the neckline and when it below the neckline sometimes uh when it just touched the neckline below and then it will bounce back up again so you have to wait until it goes below the neckline for maybe three days there's a, a time frame, maybe three days or a, a certain time frame or maybe a certain percentage. Or another way is that when it go down, it rebounds a bit. When it rebounds, you see that it didn't rebound above the neckline. It rebounds below the neckline and then that's the best time to sell. And then it, it go down again. Because when it rebounds and then it cannot pass through this um, neckline, that means that the, the strength is very weak this particular chart is very weak so that um, the chances of a big fall is is very high so then you will short okay so the entry point is here of course you must have a stop okay the stop will be somewhere in the middle and this stop is depending on your risk reward ratio so if your target is uh, about um three then this one is one like one third okay one to three ratio or if you see a, a trend line here like a 20 day moving average here or 200 day moving average here uh, then this can be also another stop okay according to the trend line or sometimes the the stop can be the peak the previous peak okay you look at the previous peak and then that could be your uh, stop. So that means your your stop level it's according to your personal trade setup. Okay, there is no fixed rule. It depends on how you want to trade. Okay, it's your personal setup. Then this one, the target also it depends on what your uh, time frame your target is. For example, you're talking about FKLI. FKLI is low volatility. Sometimes you go up five points, down five points, ten points. Within a day. Um, usually it's within that 10 points or 20 points. It will not be more than that. So therefore, you know the, 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 the movement is very low volatility. So for this kind of a, a, a financial product with such a low volatility, your target cannot be set too, too far. Okay. So it depends. But however, for this kind of a chart pattern, if you are talking about multi years kind of chart pattern or multi months, this chart pattern is built up from six month kind of a chart pattern. Then this downfall, there is a significance to it. Okay, so this downfall could last for about uh, weeks. Okay, because you have violated a uh, uh, like a six months chart pattern. So the the downtrend here could be three to five weeks time. So that if you know that the downtrend is going to be last you for three weeks time, can you set a further target? Yes, you can. Okay, so it depends on the whole setup. There's no right or wrong, but then uh, it depends on your judgment. Okay. 
but uh, uh, the, the basic thing is that you must have a stop loss and then you must have a target. And then this is another chart pattern, it's called head and shoulder. This head and shoulder is more significant than the double top. So whenever you see a head and shoulder, you will you'll be more happy because if there is a, a violation of this uh, neckline, this fall is more dramatic than this double top because this one is triple top, okay? It's a head and shoulder pattern, it's a triple top. So, and then the duration perhaps is even longer than this one. So the impact over here is more significant than this one. So people, when they see head and shoulder, they are very eager to trade already because the chances of a big fall is very high. Then um, these are the rising wedges. These are the smaller one, rising wedges, falling wedges. And uh, the, the double bottom, inverse hand and shoulder. Usually inverse hand and shoulder, very seldom we see this. Usually we'll see a double top. Because when it is, um, you have traveled like a, in a down channel for a certain time and then it go down and then it will bounce back and then it will go down. Then the mo very, uh, most of the time it will break up. Okay, it's a W. Uh, very seldom you will have this kind of situation. Go up, down, up and then down again, and then up the third time, then it go up. Because um, usually when it, you have a, such a big fall already, people are very eager to get into and then to, to get into the market and then to buy again, okay? Unless the market is not so convincing, then you will have this kind of a down and down and down. Okay, so that means the market is not so convincing. And this one is quite convincing, okay? Then um, continuation pattern, that means, um, in a, a super bull run, you have a horizontal trend and then it followed by uptrend and a horizontal trend followed by uptrend, horizontal trend followed by uptrend. So this is a super bull run, which means it's a continuation, okay? Just now it was a reversing, up to a peak and then it will reverse, trend reversing, okay? It will no longer be uptrend, it will be a downtrend. But for this one, it's a continuation, okay? So, Usually for the trade setup, I prefer this one, but this one is very difficult to come by. Once it come by, you have to maximize your profit. Okay. Then um, you have the, you have to practice. Okay. So let's see, you see this chart pattern. Okay. Before uh, you have to learn how to look at this chart pattern, identify. Okay. If you are new to this technical analysis, you will have to practice looking at the charts, okay? You look at this chart and then you look at this up and down, up and down. And then um, you identify the bottom here, the bottom here, the bottom here. So then you ask yourself, can you draw a line here? Okay, yes, you can draw a line. So this is becoming your neckline. This is the head and shoulder, a neckline. Then um, this one broke down and then it went all the way down, okay? Uh, sometimes when it broke down and then you have a slight rebound and then it broke down. Sometimes it broke all the way down and then have a small rebound and then all the way down again. So that means what? That means this kind of a uh, pattern uh, is a very weak pattern because um, uh, once it breaks, right, it breaks all the way. Okay, about 20, 30 points of down. And then, then when it pick up, the rebound is a very weak rebound. When you see the rebound, it's not like, wow, bounce all the way back to the neckline and then go up to the neckline. That's like the US stock market. Always when it go up to the uh, neckline and then it surpass the neckline and then it go up to the, re resume the uptrend again. But for the certain market, most of the market, um, it is uh, uh, usually a downtrend, okay? When it go down and then the rebound is the best time to see how strong the market is. Okay, so if you have a strong rebound, you can see immediately. If you have a weak rebound, that's even best for you. It's an opportunity for you to trade. Okay, then um, target. Okay, the target, how you measure the target. So you measure the bottom here, you measure the peak here, and then you measure the height. Okay, and then you bring this height to the projection. And then you see, true enough, the price went down to this level and then it go up again. So this is your price target. That means for technical analysis, isn't it um, quite predictable as you can see? You just need to draw the, you identify a chart pattern and then you need to draw the neckline and then you need to draw the peak 
and then you need to measure the height. After you have measured the height, you project this height to from your neckline and then you project downward. And that will be the price that is about to reach. And then after it reaches your first target, and then it will go up. Sometimes if the market is too weak, after this uh, first target, right, it will break down the first target and then it will go to another bracket low. So the same height, uh, it will go to another bracket. So, so that's uh, uh, under a very bearish situation. Okay, uh, if it's a low volatility kind of a market, usually one one bracket and then it will go up again. Okay, so this is the price target. Okay, the chart pattern principle is that um, you have to be uh, significant. That means the how big is the pattern. The big the bigger the pattern that you see, it means that it is very significant because it it tells you that it travel a long period of time, like a, a six months or a two years kind of a chart pattern, then it is very significant. If there's any violation, the impact is huge. Okay, it will and also prolong kind of an impact as well. You need to measure the height and then you need to confirm the, the breakout by looking at the, the volume. Is there an increase in the volume to confirm the breakout? Okay, so all these things. Okay, the indicators, um, I'm sure you have seen this uh, moving average. So let me um, go to this, um, straight away go to this uh, moving average. Moving average is that um, you have a 10 day moving average, five day, 20 day. Usually we look for the, the moving average that most um, technical analysts will look at because the most popular moving average is the it's a more reliable one as in people will, will act on, on, on the line. Okay, when they see that this popular line, right, is violated, then everybody will act on it. Then it becomes self-fulfilling and it will happen like that. So um, usually I will look at 20 day and the 200 day moving average. Okay, because um, these two lines are more uh, people, a uh, very popular moving average line that everybody is looking at. And then when everybody is looking at, and if there's any violation, everybody will act on it. and then the, the 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 impact will be huge okay so when the price is above the 20 day moving average it is short term bullish when it's below it is short term bearish so for a longer term analysis when the price is um, above the 200 day moving average it's long term bullish when the price is below the 200 day it's long term bearish okay and the crossover Sometimes um, if you want to use a crossover, you may use it as an indicator to buy or sell. When the shorter line is above the longer line, 20 day above the 50 day, that's a buy signal. When the 20 day is below the 50 day, that's a sell signal. Okay, so this crossover is like a signal to buy and sell. Then of course, this uh, also have some rules, okay, confirmation rules. So it's a 3% uh, confirmation rule. That means the price uh, must be, after you have seen the cross, right? You The price must be uh, moved up or down for 3% of the value. Then it's a confirmation. Because sometimes when it, it just crossed and then it didn't uh, cross above and then it go down again. Okay, so you have to wait until about 3% of confirmation. Then also you have to draw a trend line to confirm the moving average. For example, this one, uh, you see, there's a cross down, right? Then if you draw an upper trend line here, okay, if you draw an upper trend line here, it's, there's also a trend line um, uh, violation also because this trend line, this price fall below the trend line. At the same time, also there's a cross here. So therefore, both trend line and there's a cross confirm this downfall, okay? Okay, the longer the time span, the more significant the crossover. Okay, so, okay, then the next one. Okay, now we quickly come to this uh, a case study, all right? So this one um, I did in April, now it's uh, in June. Okay, so this is a price for April 26. So that was a uh, spot price was uh, 1639. And then the bid price was 1636.5, offer 1637. Then you have two contract because when you are at the spot is uh, April, then the following month is May. Okay, so usually 
um, if you look at the popularity, right, most people will trade the current month for the FKLI. Okay, so that means this uh, the current month has a more more liquid liquidity. Okay, then you look at this um trading planner. Uh, when you when you look at this uh, when you want to trade, right? What is your very first step? You need to have a trading plan. Okay, this trading plan, like uh, for me, I have a book that I will record down all my trade. Okay, so um. Every time when I trade, I will have to write down record. So it is very important. It's like a trading diary. Um, a diary is for you to reflect on your mistakes or your gains so that you know how you make money and then how you lose money. So especially the mistake part, sometimes um, from the mistakes you will learn so that you will not do again the same thing and then or you can react uh, in a different manner so that um, the 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 Actually, for trading, right, bound you bound to have mistakes. Okay, it, it's impossible that once you are in this trading, then um, you start to make money. Uh, that's a bit impossible because um, if you are talking about trading, um, there's a risk involved. So, um, but however, you will treat all those mistakes as a, a learning opportunity for you because the more um, experience you have in the future, you are able to make. Uh, more gains. So these mistakes that you make is like a foundation. Okay, you are just um building up a foundation, just like a, a a toddler who learn how to crawl and then who learn how to get up, stand and then walk. So of course, the toddler will have a lot of uh fall. Okay, but however, you will treat every fall as an opportunity for you to learn more. So for trading, I think for for us, if we have this kind of mentality, uh, we can um, survive in a, in a long-term manner. Okay, that means you, you, can, you can be a, a long-term uh, trader because um, if once you are in this um, trading, right, most likely you will be tra trader for life. Okay, because um, the more experienced you, you are, um, the, the, the chances of you making uh, money in this trading business is higher. Okay. So of course you must have some strategies. Uh. So so hopefully today my sharing of my strategy can help you in your trading. So um, for this trading plan, first you have to look at the overall um, market. So um, I'm using this um, Busa station, okay? Busa station, and then um, you have to um, take out this uh, uh, chart and then you have to analyze the big picture first. So you can see that um, our BUSA station uh, chart, uh, our KLCI index, you we have a, a big chart pattern here, okay? The big, this big chart pattern is a head and shoulder. And then there's another shoulder here. So can you draw a, a neckline? Yes, you can. In fact, the neckline is at a 1660. Okay, so now we are actually at 165 or 164, 16, today's 16440. So we are actually below this neckline. However, we are struggling. We are struggling to move up above this neckline. So that means overall, you can tell the, the picture is a bearish picture. Okay, overall it's a bearish picture because we are now uh, below the neckline. Okay, so um, however, even though overall it's a bearish, right? But it's up to you whether you want to go for a long position or a short position. So for a starter, right? I will um, advise you go for uh, focus on one one trend. Okay. You, if you want to go for long position, uh, you go every time you go in, it's a long position. Okay. That means you you go in long and then you sell high and then it, you wait until it come down again and then you wait for another opportunity for you to buy long and then you go up. Okay, so when you focus in one direction, you are able to uh, make better decision. Same things for the short. If you're focusing on the short, right, you just make wait for the trend line to violate the, sh the, the uptrend. When the price is moving up nicely, you, you, you don't do anything. You just draw a trend line and then waiting for that uptrend to violate the, the trend line. And then once you see that the trend line is violated, then you go into short, okay? then um, you, you set your target, it's up to you. Five points, three points, it's up to you. Then um, when it go down, 
again and then you see that the price is trying to reverse and then you wait for it to go up okay and then when it goes up you just draw another trend line and then you wait for another opportunity for you to short again okay so so this way you are actually focused on one side and then you are able to uh, have more time to think and then uh, to make better decision otherwise you can do both if you are very experienced that means um you draw the trend line you long uh it was a a, a a long position you enter at a low point and then it went up and then you draw a nice trend line so when the minute this price break below the trend line you close your position and then then you sell short Okay, you short and then you draw another trend line for this uh, uh, short channel. See that the price move within the down channel. And then the minute that this um, price break above this trend line, then you close your position and then you long. Okay, so, so this way you are doing both direction, long, short, long, short. So um, you can have that um, provided you are quick, uh, fast in reaction. Okay, then you can do that. Then the time frame. Is it going to be a day trade or is it you're going to wait for a, a, a longer time, like a few days? So usually uh, for, for me, I prefer swing trading. Uh, swing. swing trading meaning that um, you wait for a, a turning point. Okay, the, the price drop for a while and then, then you see the stabilize and then when it turn up, break the trend line and then that's a, a, a swing trade. Okay, so this swing trade may come in like uh, once in uh, three weeks time, may not be all the time, every day. Okay, so uh, the, the reason for a swing trade is that um, it depends on your personality. Because for me, I'm a very busy person. I do not have the time to sit in front of the computer to look at the screen for each of the uh, short trade. Okay, my, I, I, I can only afford so much time uh, so little time so I can go for a longer uh, swing trading so when I log into a position it could be days okay it could be days until um, end of the week then I will I will sell the position so this kind of trade is like uh, uh, you got to be patient you got to wait for the trade setup okay in order to have uh, one opportunity so uh, Patience is also one of the, 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 the strategy or your character that you must have for trading. You must wait for the, the, the trend, the pattern to form, then you act on it. Okay, so, so you cannot be too rushed and then too impatient, then you will spoil the whole thing. Okay, so this time frame, um, as you trade more, then you will know which time frame suits you the best. Okay, so if you are quick temple, you are fast in reaction, uh, everything you, you want fast, then maybe you can trade at a shorter time, okay? And when you trade at a shorter time, perhaps you want to make your target very uh, small as well. So maybe uh, three points, you, you, will, you will move, you will go, okay? Then um, you will not set like a, a 10 points kind of a target. Okay, because your time frame is so short, so you have to in and out, in and out um, most of the time. Or even one point, two points also can, depends on your style. Okay, which month contract um, for FTLI will be the current month contract better, it's more liquid. The target profit depends on your time frame. Okay, so um, also depends on the chart pattern. If you see that um, there is a, a resistance at a certain point there, you know that the price mostly will, will hit below that resistance and then it will turn down again. So maybe you can set your target profit at below that resistance point. Okay, and of course the stop loss. The stop loss will be your another um, trend line, maybe 20 day moving average, or it can be uh, based on your um, preference because since you said you want to um, have a 10 points kind of a, a target maybe your stop loss is uh, three points okay or uh, for swing trading you can have 10 points to 10 points even because you know that overall it's going to turn up okay and then um, you are able to allow for a bigger 
bigger uh, fall and then before it rebounds. Okay, so uh, it depends on your style. Okay, some people they are able to um, withstand the kind of volatility, then you can set a bigger stop loss. Okay, if you can't, then you set a smaller stop loss. And then when you set a bigger stop loss, make sure you have enough money in your account so that you don't get a margin call. Okay, then um, I also like to uh, share with you these uh, four, four charts here. Um, the first one is a five minute chart. The next one is a 15 minute chart and then you have a 30 minute chart and then you have a one day chart. Of course, when you want to look at the big picture, right? One day chart will be the best. Okay. Then um, if you are looking at day trading, uh, day trading, um, I have tried the day trading, but it's not my personality. It doesn't suit my personality because my, my mind gets too stressed out because of uh, you need to be very, very focused as a day trader. So as a day trader, five minutes charts um, will be um, good for you. So what you do is that, okay, let me see if I can bring you this. This one is the Busa station. Uh, I opened up the four chart here. And then this one is a five minutes chart. So today is 13, 13 here. So you can see that starting from 13, uh, this is today's um, price trend, five minutes chart. Okay, so you can see every minute, every five minutes, there's one bar here. Every five minutes, there's one bar here. Every five minutes, there's one bar here. So uh, let me let me do like this. Okay, okay. So say you you stop at yesterday. Uh, yesterday was uh, closing at one six five zero, right? That was five o'clock. You stop at 1650. So today you start at nine, uh, 845. So 845 over here, the first bar was uh, 845 to 850, five minutes, and then this bar will come out here. One bar will come up in front of you. And then another five minutes gone, another bar come out. Okay, so if you want to trade the trend line, one of my strategy is to trade the trend line, you can do this. You draw one trend line up here, okay? Then when it violate the trend line, that's a, a sell signal for you. So when you see the trend line violated, the next buy you can short already, okay? And then when you short, and then you put a resistance back at the, you see this uh, candlestick or not? The red bar candlestick. Usually I will put my stop uh, at the, top of this previous candlestick bar. Okay, I repeat now. Uh, just now I, I have this first, first bar come out, right? Then this first bar already violate my trend line. So then it's a short uh, opportunity for me. So I sell short. So I sell short around here, okay, around this level. Then where do I put a stop? I put a stop at this, this, uh, the height of this first bar, the red color bar, the height of it is around 1650 or 1651. Okay, so that's my stop. Okay, then um, if the price hit that, I will have to uh, uh, close my position. So my stop for this, this, this is suitable for day trade, uh, day trade. It's not a swing trader, it's a day trade. So for, for this, uh, Stop, I repeat, is the height of the candlestick bar over here, which is the top here. You see the height is from here to here, right? This is the range of that uh, candlestick. So I put a stop right at this level, 1651, I think, okay? Then you, you, you let the profit runs, okay? Then you move, you move again, okay? Let me click again. So you move, you move as you move another five minutes. So the, the price keep dropping. You sh this is the first 15 minutes that I was talking that usually if you want to make some big gains, uh, usually the first 15 minutes uh, is volatile and then you can make, make gains. And then when, when it hits, uh, if for example, for, for me, my one day um, profit target is 500 only. 
So it, it one day I hit that 500 ringgit in the first 15 minutes, I will, I will have to stop trading for the rest of the day. Okay. So, so it depends on your target. Okay. So um, the reason why uh, once you hit your target, you stop trading is because the, the less trade you involve, right? That means your risk is smaller because you keep trading, trading, the, of course your risk is exposing your risk. Okay, so once you hit your target, so you just stop trading, then you, you conserve. You, because when you don't trade, there's no risk. All right. All right. Then um, the, the, as the price drop, right, then you start to draw uh, another trend line here. I hope you can understand what I'm doing here. Okay, I draw another trend line here. Another trend line here. Okay, so this is a down channel. Down channel. So you just wait for the you just wait for this to move five minutes, five minutes, and then keep moving until you see this thing happen. It's a doji. It's a cross. It's a doji. So that means the the trend could be changing. Okay. So true enough, you have one green bar. Okay. Since um, I want to focus on the short, right? So one green bar, I ignore the green bar. I look for short opportunity again. So another opportunity comes here because if I were to draw another uh, trend line here, okay, excuse me. Um, so you can see that this uh, red bar has already violated the trend line here. So also another uh, short opportunity for me. So when I enter, I enter at the second bar here. That means before the second before the second bar former, I will have to enter already. And I have to put a stop where? At the height of this first red bar. Okay, at the height of this first red bar. And then um, I let my profit run. Okay, and then I see what's happening. Okay, so another five minutes gone, then you see a dodgy sign. Another five minutes gone, you see a red bar. So you just let, let it run, let it run. Let it run. Okay, let it run. Because why you have supposed to draw a trend line here? Okay, to draw a trend line here. Okay, let as long as it is in the down channel, you just let the profit runs. Okay, let it run. Okay. Click. Okay, let it run. Let it run. Let it run until over here I can draw. Okay, you see there's a, a violation over here. Then you, you close your position. Then you wait for uh, another short position. But over here, there's no short uh, that you wait for the green bar. Because when you close the position, you are supposed to see that the price will go up, but it didn't it go down again. So, but uh, you already missed the, the opportunity. So you just wait, okay, you don't go in here. So you wait, wait, wait until you see a, a, a uptrend line here. Okay, this uptrend line, that means you are waiting for this uptrend line to be validated, then there's another shot. Okay, but however, if you look at the overall picture, it has been like falling and falling. Uh, the chances of falling may be reduced. Okay, as the volume reduces, uh, the chance of falling may be reduced. So then you better stop. Okay, you, you just, the chances of a uh, uh, shop opportunity will be less. So maybe maybe over here you are already hit your target already. So you can rest for the rest of the day. Okay, sounds um sounds easy, but actually when you practice, uh, there's a lot of emotion involved. Okay, because this this thing is already uh happened. So when we draw lines and then when we talk like that, it's like um there's no emotion involved, but. When you are involved with this, uh, with the uh, emotion, it's very difficult for you to act sometimes. Okay, you have to try, you have to try, okay? So for a starter, FKLI is the best um, futures contract for you to start. You don't try the CPO yet, you try the FKLI first. And then um, this this is for the day trade, okay? And then for the swing trade, I will go a day, day uh, one day um, chart. Okay, so that I can see clearly for the swing trade. So this is a nice swing trade for me. And we'll go up and then, okay. So back to here. 
So this is the trend breakout strategy. Okay, so this strategy um, is the oldest, most traditional kind of strategy that you can think of. You can, of course, you can apply into a two minute chart, one minute chart, it's up to you. It's your research, you based on your research, you see whichever suits you. Okay, then you use that uh, uh, finding. Okay, um, what is suitable for me may not be suitable for you. Um, so you have to do your own research and then, then you uh, can trade better. Then another one is the gap up field. Now this one, usually I will, um, I would I would use the the I will use this as a backup. Like if if I see there's opportunity, then I will use. But most of the time, I will use the trend line. So this uh, another strategy where whereby you see a gap up here. Gap up meaning that the price uh, jump. There's a, a a a space here, and then the price jump up. Okay, then there's a bar there. Okay, so this is gap up. So when you have a gap up, usually it's supposed to be bullish, right? However, when this gap up followed by the up the price drop and then this price drop to fill up this gap okay this price drop here to fill up this gap so it means what no more positive bearish is coming okay then um however you can see that sometimes the the price was continue to rise and then then it will fall again okay so but usually if you see this right usually you will have to go in at this point. But however, if you go in at this point, remember you put a stop loss at the height of the previous red bar. And then if it break up, you have to close the position. Then you have to wait for another opportunity. And then another opportunity is that you see that there's a double top here, the double top chart pattern here. So maybe you can draw a neckline here. And then when you draw a neckline here, and then when this point here break through the neckline, uh, there's a, a, a great short opportunity here. Okay, so um, I would think that this um, gap up strategy is a backup strategy if you want to trade. Make sure you have a stop. Okay, make sure you have a stop. Uh, however, for this gap up strategy, it's very good for the US stocks. Okay, very good for the US stocks, but not so good for the FKLI. Okay, honestly, not so good for the FKLI. Okay, money management. Um, a few tips here. Number one, have a maximum dollar stop loss. Okay, my stop loss is, let's say, uh, 200 ringgit or something. So you must have a maximum stop loss or 500 ringgit. Okay, it depends on your um, stop loss strategy. So this takes uh, discipline to administer. Then find trades with the solid risk reward ratio. Okay, you always look for the trade that is the uh, high, highest probability because when you are looking at the trading, right, everything is about probability. So the probability for the chart pattern kind of trade is much higher than than any other okay because when you have a chart pattern that form over a period of months or a period of time and then when that chart pattern is violated this kind of a, a trade is called high probable trade okay when it's chart pattern uh, of course trend line is a normal kind of a trade now normal kind of trade and then plus with you must have the stop loss strategy um do not average down and take breaks and then if you are really uh, in a losing streak for like two consecutive losing streak, right? Then maybe you just need to take a time out. Okay, go out and then um, maybe you can just stop for the rest of the day. Avoid higher risk tra trades. Okay, that means um, high risk, high return. Okay, sometimes when you have this, uh, you are not sure about, you don't see any chart pattern, you just guess only, then that's high risk. Okay, so avoid that stick to your niche okay if you are good in short you will stick to it if you're good in long you stick to it if you're good in identifying the chart pattern you stick to it if you are good in uh, identifying the um the bottom then you stick to it avoid vengeance trading so i want to revenge i lose so much money i want to revenge i want to get back avoid this thing okay because you are emotional already once you discover you are emotional uh, i think you better stop Okay, because you will you will make more mistakes when you are emotional. Okay, so in summary, select the instrument to trade. In this case, I will advise FKLI. Okay, if you are new, have a few strategies on hand. Okay, like what I say can be a trend line strategies, can be a, a chart pattern strategies, or can be a, a gap up strategies. 
Okay, identify the most favorable risk and reward ratio. Okay, so this one uh, is uh, the risk and reward ratio also depends on your support and resistance. Where is the uh, support and where is the resistance so that you know that uh, your support is also your risk. Okay, how much is your risk that you can lose? And then your resistance is your reward. Take profit and cut loss according to your plan and review your trades, reflect on each trade. So um, I hope today I've covered as much as I can and I have shared with you my um, strategy. So I hope this can help you in your um, trading. So back to you, Simita. Simita. Okay, thank you, Pauline. <laughs> Yeah, just, uh, yeah. I'm overrun my time, so sorry. That's okay. Uh, any questions? Open for yeah. the questions. So now any questions uh, that we have? Yeah, we got quite a lot of questions. Yeah, I hope I can answer as much as I can. Okay, so um, the first question is, uh, where to get the list of points marks for the FKLI components? Where to get what? The list of points or marks. For the FKLI components. Oh, I see. Okay. In fact, I opened the, the website, but I forgot to show you. Okay. Um, you can go Google um top 30 KLCI components stock, and then you will come to this Malaysia stock dot biz. All right. Then um you will have this uh the top 30 component with the market cap here. So you can see 13. B, 42B, 51B, all these are the heavy weights. So you know that these heavy weights uh, carry more weights mm -hmm. and their price movement will affect the KLCI index more. Okay, so this is a very good question. So I'm glad you raised this. Okay. okay. Um, then the second question, uh, do you have, uh, do you reference other markets like SIM, SCI or make, and make decision? Um, actually, my KL, if you are talking about FKLI, right, I will look at the KLCI index. That's it. But of course, um, US market, like uh, S&P 500, all this will influence as well, definitely. Um, yeah, when you're looking at the US market, of course, um, in before you trade, right, you have to look at the, the overnight closing for the US market, see what's uh, whether it's uh, up or down day for the US market, then you know the, 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 the sentiment for today's. And then once you discover the sentiment for today, then at the back of your mind, you must have a support and resistance for that day. Then you can trade. Oh, okay. You must have an idea. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when you look at large cap component stocks, what is your time frame? Daily chart? Um, what do you mean by, uh, uh, am I talking about, when oh, you're talking about that, study the individual stock is it yeah really? when you're studying at the individual stock um i look at the daily chart okay so uh mm. for our next question um, just to get the the overall fundamental yeah oh okay uh so um okay, next. next question since uh fkli is a is monthly contract do you draw trend lines mm. based on klci um KLCI and the FKLI, I do trend lines on these two. So the KLCI will be our KLCI index, the main one. Then um, I draw trend line on that and also draw trend line on the FKLI contract. Okay, I show you this one. You see that there's this uh, June, July, September, all these contract months, right? So mm -hmm. this one with, without the months one, uh, you click onto it and that one you can draw trend line on that. I think I have come up with the trend line on this one. This is a futures contract. And then oh. you can draw trend line on this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. any question? Ah, uh, yeah. So um, the next question, uh, which market or indices in Malaysia you do technical trading? Uh, which market? What do you mean? Which market? Market or indices in Malaysia? Um, so the FKLI, I do trading on the FKLI and I also do trading on the FCBO. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This two. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. do um, Forex. <laughs> I just do the Malaysian derivatives market because I, I feel that this uh, market, I'm more familiar. The chances of me to make money is uh, higher. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, then we'll go to our next question. Um, 
which combination of moving average is best for short term trading? Um, short term, what's your duration of short term? Is it like, uh, for me, short term, it could be days, you know, or it could be weeks. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at uh, uh, days or weeks that I normally look, uh, it will be 20 day moving average. Oh, okay. Hmm. okay so uh, another question is, how to calculate each stock weightage in 2KLCI index? Uh, that one, that one is actually a calculation. Um, maybe you can Google it on the ways of calculating the um, index because for index calculation is a pretty standard either the CPI, uh, consumer price index, all kinds of index that uh, there's a calculation that means you based on your weighting and then you times mm -hmm. the value. So there's a calculation. You may Google it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So for our next question, um, in the beginning you mentioned about futures. So how futures mm -hmm. or warrants uh, influence the influences the stock price? Um, actually, I would think that the underlying equity, underlying instrument is more important. So it's not like the other way around. It should be the underlying is influencing the, the futures market. Okay. Um, so I would think that it's an underlying um, instrument that is influencing the futures market and uh, not that futures market is uh, influencing the underlying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so for our next question, um, any software for practice on the technical analysis chart? Um, the Busa Station uh, is very good. I uh, oh. highly recommend that. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, okay next but next for question. free, you can Google. Like, you can Google. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so the next question, what is the resistance and support of KLCI this month and resistance and support this year? Okay, okay. This month I can I can say that uh, we have gone come out from the bottom, which is uh one thousand six hundred point. If we had come out from that, so now currently we are actually recovering. So the support is mm -hmm. one six two five, and then the resistance is about one, uh maybe one six uh six five, or hopefully it can go up to one six seven zero. I'm not sure if it can go up, but for this month, um, it's June uh, mm, mm -hmm. maybe one six six five. But the bottom is a 1625. Oh, I hope okay. that it will not break below the 1625 because when it breaks below the 1625, we are all over the downtrend again. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, if for the year, um, that's a good question. Because initially, uh, I would think that uh, for this year, at least we have to maintain at 1,600 points. Uh, that's my minimum. Oh, okay. So hopefully this one will, will, be, will be true. <laughs> Okay, so um, we proceed to the next question. Uh, will stop loss help in gap down situations? Oh, no, that's a good question. Because when you are stop loss, right? Okay, when you put a stop here, and then when there's a gap, remember the gap is a, a space, right? That means the jump, they jump from one price to another straight away. That means they miss your, they miss your stop loss price. So immediately, Mm -hmm. your 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 stop loss will not be triggered it will be on another level down so then you have to do a manual stop loss yourself because oh. um, the price has get uh, has passed your price and it, it moved to another level mm -hmm. down so they, they miss your price and then they will not trigger your price yeah okay Okay, so for our next question, um, when you when you talk about FKLI, it means FKLI is a monthly contract worth four thousand. How do I sell before mm. expiry contract, or do I need to wait for the expiry period? Oh, uh, you have to sell. You have to sell before the expiry contract. Uh -huh. Um, usually for the uh, spot month, you you buy and sell. It could be within a day. It could be mm -hmm. within a week. Mm -hmm. Okay, but however. Um, I have tried one um, experiment whereby I just think that that month is a up month. That means it's a positive month. Oh, so okay. beginning of the month, I just put a long contract and then I just wait until the end of the day. Then um, I let it uh, expire itself. I didn't say I just let it expire itself. Then they will automate the, the exchange will the brokerage house will automatically um, uh, sell for you will, will, will calculate for you at the settlement price. So, so 
but over that month, right, my heart is up and down, up and down, up and down <laughs> because of uh, the, such a long period of waiting time. So it's very stressful. Okay. So in the end, my trade is within one week. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, um, which chart pattern is more reliable between head and shoulders or double top? Uh, I would think it's the uh, head and shoulder. Head and shoulder when it comes to the um, when it's going down, okay. When it's going down, it's head and shoulder. Mm. But if it's uh from bottom to up, I would prefer to see a W. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for our next question, um, do you do spread trading or one side trading is more frequent? I don't do spread trading because um, for me, spread trading, the gain is very small. So then it becomes like a, a, you got to have a volume. I prefer swing trading, swing trading and um, uh, one side trading. Like you go for long means um, you always look for long opportunity or you go for short, then you always look for short opportunity. Mm -hmm. Then uh, swing trading uh, will suit um, my uh, risk appetite also. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, Pauline, I think that's all the questions for today because we're running out okay. of time as well. Yeah. So okay. I, will, I will just take the control back from you. Okay, sure. Yeah. So thank you so much, Pauline. We have uh, already come to the thank end of the webinar. And thank you. So, yeah, I'll just show the next. Okay, so for our next webinar, will be on the 4th of July, same time, 8.30 to 10 p.m. And it's a um, Chinese webinar, so if you're interested, you can register here. I'll just drop the link in the chat box. Yeah, so you can register for your uh, session here. Okay. And so... Uh, that's all for today. Thank you again so much, Pauline. And thank you, everyone, for joining in tonight. So with this, we just end our webinar for tonight and see you again next week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Pauline. Thank you.